Alright people, welcome back to All Our Asians. Um, I didn't really feel like doing a live stream today. Um, I know some days are usually reserved for live streams, but today I just want to play All Our Asians just because we really, really enjoyed the first part of it. And um, the developer, I tweeted at him and he actually responded to me, so I mean, I already really enjoyed this game, so I'm gonna continue playing it if I can remember all of it. So that's jump, that's enter, and yeah, we're just gonna keep going. Um, for those of you who missed the first part, uh, I would advise strongly that you watch the first part because it's a good game. Um, and yeah, that's what I would say you should do. Um, but the general premise for those of you who just want like a little catch up um, seems to be about this uh, young man, Yurio, whose father is um, in the throes of death. Like he's, he's pretty much on his way out, to say it in a very crude way. Um, and because of this, um, he has decided to go into this experiment where he is going through his father's memories and in the last few memories he was going through uh, his father's uh, young, younger moments, I guess. Um, but that's where we're at. And now we're going to check out some other memories. Also let me know if at some point you would like me to stream this. I don't know if I would want to stream this, but um, it might be an interesting idea to play a game while I stream. I don't know if um, people would enjoy that, because I probably wouldn't be able to pay attention very much to the live chat, uh, but I guess we'll have to see. But I was quite surprised that people liked uh, the premise in this game, despite its appearance. Um, so, it was a happy surprise. I'm glad, because I really love it. Um, so, it definitely has a, has a little bit of ambiance. So, it's definitely that. I'm also glad that it definitely has a level of nostalgia in front of This is clearly like a 64-bit game, but look how pretty it is. I'm, I'm very impressed by how this can create a mood, and um, it's a very warm game. With some very cold themes. A construction worker is standing in uniform. Her pose seems unnatural and stiff. 
closed due to re uh, regional destabilization. Yuto tilts his head. Can't you let me through? She opens her eyes as wide as possible. No. Get out of the way. Yuto pushes past the woman. The worker begins to fade away. Yuto, man, you've got to stop fucking Tana snapping people out of the universe. <laughs> Doctor already said that we can't be doing that because it destabilizes the memory. So pretty. I want to explore. Like I, I, I think the the game creator of this game um, goes on to make like an open world game because this aesthetic is it's great. A hiker wearing boots and denim is sitting is sitting cross-legged on the grass. His short black hair looks disheveled and oily. Hey, where can I find memories? The hiker smiles softly, looking at the ground, tracing a circle in, in the grass with his index finger. Mm -hmm. No memories, just the great outdoors and nature. You've really seen nothing. Just mountains and roads, highways are dangerous. I was in danger on a highway once, but the great outdoors and nature, finally, at last. The hiker quickly turns his head to Yuto and laughs. Hey, we made it. An eerie chill passes through Yuto's body. Um, alright, never mind. is taking a rex next to the entry ramp. She silently stares into the vista, ignoring Yuito. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm disoriented with this. <laughs> Do me like this. Definitely gonna fall off this. We're not gonna talk very much throughout this because uh, your girl is not very good at maneuvering, especially since she doesn't have an actual controller, she just has a keyboard. Business casual wearing man is sitting mid-air in a driving position. His face is red from stress. 
gritting his teeth and shutting his eyes. Ah. Ah. You're all gonna crash and hurt someone sooner or later. Oh, this is a race thing. I gotta, I gotta stay safe from you all. Yuta begins to speak, but something comes over him and he decides to hold back. Yuta leaves the driving man alone. So the main character is meant to be a uh, Japanese-American, so I think this is uh, meant to be like a race thing. Chinks. I'm not trying to be offensive, I'm just reading. <laughs> Yuto looks stunned and stares at the woman. What? I'm gonna kill someone driving like that. Who are you calling Chink? Watch where you're backing up. She's not responding to me at all. Rude people. Jeez. sequences, very um, trippy and artistic. Although the, the zigzag and the anxiety now makes sense for the for the theme of this entire conversation, I suppose. disastrous if it wasn't. My friend, you've come here to learn, haven't you? No, tell me where the nearest memory is. Man throws his arms again. Memories? But our world is collapsing, yes? Landscapes twist and turn. Atmospheres and views won't stand still. The man's face turns from smiling to a stern, blank look. There's nothing we can do. No longer do we have stable points of view, so a teenage boy from behind the man stands on the front. Faster and faster, let's just go faster. We have everything and we can no longer do. What are you talking about? 
The man shouts, my friend, forget the memories, ignore your instinct, wonder no longer. The middle-aged woman stands up and talks, faster and faster, I want to go faster. Yeah, no, even faster. Jesus. Whoa now, don't get so wild, you all. The man begins to speak again. In this world, my friend, there is nothing for you. We are just here to wait for the world to decay. The world? Decay? What are you talking about? The floor rumbles. Ah, yes. There it is, my friend. This is it. No longer can we stop. It is hard for you to understand. Just, what are you? Wait with us. You say it's easy Oh, shit. That was intense. Yuta comes to you. He looks around him. The people who are from before are nowhere to be seen. Yuta stares forward into the distance. What have you done? Yuta, what have you done? to this developer man <laughs> the level of uncomfortable I'm feeling right now <laughs> okay. oh there's a man in there oh the depth the, oh no, no I don't. <laughs> why would you do that <laughs> I don't like it I don't like it Are you? Yeah, me, you both, you do. <laughs> you know you can get hurt out there. Go back to a station. You'll save me the stress. I would. Stuck down here. Too bad. That's what you get for wandering off. Hey, Jesus, you're, you're just going to leave? Not unless you say you messed up. That was a mistake there, you know, falling off the edge of a memory. Uh, I'll leave then. I... Yuta hesitates. I shouldn't have wandered too far from the memory world. The person smiles. Now that's more like it. The first step is admitting your failure. You're from another world, huh? I can tell. If you weren't, there's no way you'd get here. I can get you out of here. Of course, I'll need some help first. What sort of help? <laughs> hesitating. You're not in a negotiating position, you know. I'm not negotiating, I'm just wondering. Well, in my city there are problems. The sick, the poor, people who can't find a job, ones without a home. Where the fuck is this going? You, you need a volunteer or something? Kind of. Follow me. I don't want to, man. I don't trust you. Look at this. I did think this was going to be like a creepy, scary game. I guess it isn't. I'm overreacting a lot.
I don't like this. So tell me your name. Military. Nice. Call me General. You're a military officer. Not quite. I just like the name. I'm guessing you came from someone's memory world, right? Probably saw some weird stuff. Hopefully none of those love, action memories, general laughs. Uh, no. Where are we? Are we in a memory? No, we're almost in outer space. Your father's world is like a tiny planet, and you strayed too far from it. There's only one symbolic if he Ephemera from him scattered around here. You're from Earth, right? Yeah. Interesting. Maybe you're familiar with my city now. What do you mean? I'll fill you in once we're on the train. Come on, it's here. structures passing by. So are you going to tell me where you're going? Be patient. Tell me about yourself first. I I'm a hedge fund analyst. What's that? Well, clients invest in us and we help them make more money by selling... more money by selling and trading stuff. Oh, it's fine, I guess. Where does that money make you, make you come from? Where does the money... Where does that money you make come from? Buy low, sell high, it's pretty basic. Oh, interesting. That sounds quite simple. Yuto looks out the window. Behind him he sees the white glow of his father's memory world fading away. Countless tiny lights are in the distance. Nice view, huh? Those are also memory worlds. Whose memory world did you come from? My father's. I see. Looking for something? Uh, yeah. Why? I'm curious? I don't know. Ancestors, parents. I'm just curious. I see. Where are you from? Earth. Earth? But... Right, you're from Earth too. There might be a similar... They might be similar. Paris, Tokyo, America, right? Yeah, weird. Same cities. Interesting. Hmm. It's a bit of a stretch, but... My Earth isn't a memory world. Everyone there is living. When they die, a memory world forms nearby. So my father's on your Earth? No, he's, well, he used to, but... Oh, oh, you already know. It's okay, you two. No, it's not. If it was, you'd let me go. I don't know how much time I have left. My father is, is terminal now, and if he dies, well... Her size. Just wake me up when we get there. The train is gently rumbling as it floats through the space. A planet comes into view. Chicago Union Station? That's right. Familiar? I live around here. But this is a different Chicago, isn't it? Yes, of course. But perhaps not too different. Meet me at the fast food place at Adams and Wabash, east of here. Straight down Adams past the river, near the elevated train tracks, hard to miss. General walks out of the train platform. Just how far am I from my world? Mom, maybe you were right. Am I going the right way? I don't think I'm going the right way.
waiter enters the fast food restaurant and looks for general. A number of other people are waiting in line for food. Workers shuffle between filling drinks, bagging food and taking orders. The general looks over at Yuto. Hey, you're here. Good. Yuto walks over to general. You know, you want to try the fries here. General eats a fry. Anyways, straight to the point. Right, what do you need me to do? I work for an immigration rights organization. Right now, there are some smaller, less popular restaurants struggling. Some more popular chefs are copying their ideas and running the smaller places out of business. Some complaints towards the restaurants are unfair, possibly biased, and I've heard that some potential restaurateurs are having trouble getting business loans. Uh, how do you know this is true? Do you have data? If you're talking numbers, well, sort of, but a lot of this is word of mouth. Sometimes you need to trust someone at face value, you know? Well, hey, I never said you were lying and... Anyways, the League of Innovators. They are Chicago's ruling party. I know, awful name, but there are there are bigger absurdities than that, General Forbes. If we can convince them to change their policies, maybe you can fix some of these problems with the restaurateurs. Where is this game going? <laughs> Me? Alone? Well, yeah, I mean, I've got a number of other things you can do too, but that seems easy enough. How do we convince the government? Sounds hard. And I mean, how long will it take? I don't think I have days to spare. Don't worry, anyone can bargain with the innovators. It goes fast nowadays. Doing this requires two things, trust and a policy. Talk to enough people, gain their trust, then get, to, get them to believe in your policy. Then see if the innovators will pass the policy. A debate, basically. Know what you want to change. Have a policy to get there, and have some people's testimonies to back you up. Well, okay. Just don't waste the innovator's time. The worst penalties are for reducing their productivity. What's the punishment? Don't worry about it. Just do a good job. Besides, you have no choice. General smiles. I would focus on finding a policy first, then gain someone's trust. Just one person's trust? Should be fine. Aim for a leader or business owner, not a random guy off the street, someone related to the policy. For a policy, maybe seek out the mayor of Chinatown. I'm sure she has a few ideas. Okay. Well, come on. You don't have all the time in the world, right? No, it's just... Do you think there's anyone here who knew my father? I don't know, maybe. Who knows? Maybe I can ask around. Don't get your hopes up though, my earth's a big place too. I've got other people to meet with. Come back here when you've talked to the mayor. What is this? I'm guessing this is the the innovator's place, right? Yeah, the sign that says innovator's campus is this way. I don't need to get go there though. Sorry. I'm fine. Up at the mayor. This might take a while. Is that all that okay? Is it okay? It might take a hot minute to find everything. Just give us give us a second. Probably jump cut this so you don't have to watch all of it.
What's that? What is this? Is this the station? Did I come out of here? Yeah, this is the station. I'm dumb, sorry. What am I meant to do? It said I need to find a man, but where am I going to find a man? It doesn't seem like it's anywhere nearby. Go back into the fast food restaurant in a sec. down the tunnel till you get to Chinatown. Aren't there trains? What? This is a t this tunnel hasn't had trains in years. Some company owns these owns all these tunnels and charges the government for maintenance. What? How do people get to work? Huh? Don't you work in a company door? Only a few people can use nowadays. Hmm. Thank you. 
looking for the mayor's office. Do you know where it is? Uh, one second. I think. Let me look it up. The person looks at her phone for a while. Oh, duh, right. It's the big building right across the main bridge. But why is Chinatown on the ground? Oh, are you visiting Chicago for the first time? Chinatown is still above ground, but that's essentially a tourist trap now. Nowadays, most people live and work down here. What happened? What's wrong with the surface? Everyone got priced out. Priced down. People stopped using the subway for work. And that opened up all this underground land for development. Oh, well, that's quite a story. The man laughs. Yeah, that's right. Weird world we live in. Oh, Interesting concept. Yuta asks the mayor's secretary for an appointment. The mayor is just about to head out for lunch, but has a few minutes to see Yuta. Yuta enters the mayor's office. The mayor smiles at Yuta. Well, hello there, she says. Hi, I'm Yuta. I was, uh, wondering if you had any ideas about restaurant-related policies to give to the innovators. Oh, hmm. Well, the innovators are quite set into their ideas. It might be a tough one. Yes, but I thought you might have a suggestion. Well, here's a small idea. It's hard for small restaurant owners to, s to get a foothold in the neighbourhood. They keep going out of business. Right, but can you actually solve that? That's just competition. While they may not be popular, they do have their share of regular customers, their community meeting places. But the innovators only give subsidies for innovative ideas, usually gimmicks related to service or, or the food style. So when it comes time to make rent, these restaurants aren't as popular and the government sees no reason to keep them alive. Food reviews are usually tourists and they avoid local, less flashy places. Or they do go and leave bad reviews. Review algorithms then make it and make it harder to discover these restaurants. Pretty bad cycle. Hmm, that sounds rough. Well, I'd suggest a tax for higher earning restaurants that is redistributed as subsidies for struggling businesses. Redistributing social capital would help too. Big restaurants could be required to advertise smaller ones. Not sure how the details would work, but but usually big restaurants just take smaller restaurants' ideas. A way to give back would be nice. I can't imagine they would go for that. Isn't that just a tax raise? Well, that's where you, where you think about the phrasing and finding support from others. I see. Thanks. I'll think about this. Bye now. Yuto leaves the mayor's office. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Well, I guess we're going back to the restaurant to see General.
explains the idea to General. Hmm. You have to be careful when pitching to the innovators, but you should be able to get some trust now. Get people to support your policy, I mean. Look at who is most vulnerable to what is going on right now and talk to them. My apartment in the Argyle station area is close to a bunch of immigrant owned restaurants. I'm sure they'd love to talk to the innovators. So why not go and see why it is you can help them you say if if this is so easy, why don't you do it? I'm pretty busy, Yuto. Yuto pauses. General, about my father. Did you find anything? Well, I didn't want to distract you right away, but your father was popular around here, Chicago. What? Why didn't you tell me earlier? Who can I talk to to learn more? Well, focus on your task. You don't have time to go interview. It's but tell me where he worked or something. Yuto, you probably don't have much time left. Look, I knew your father. I don't know if this is a coincidence. Hurry up and do your task and I can tell you more. Well, I... Enough. Get going. Leave the city and take the lake shore path north to Argyle Station area. Come back here after. Okay, I'm guessing that's the area that I need to go to. That I tried to enter before. interesting and I definitely want to play it more and if you would like to see more of it let me know. Um, I, I think I've found it very very interesting uh, on the whole so 
yeah, let me know what you think, and I will talk to you guys soon. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.